What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the opinionated hippie, and this is uh, the second to last part of my reviewing and ranking and taking apart and analyzing and discussing Apple's top 100 albums of all time list. Uh, quite a statement on their behalf. Uh, just going through it in groups of 10, just to see what I would agree with, what I disagree with, and approaching it as if I was one of five editors that was given this list is like, this is what we're going to go to publish. We're going to publish this list. You as an editor can uh, remove 20 of these and, and thus replace them. You can um, move them around and you can keep five artists, but only replace, uh, keep five artists and replace an album. Uh, so different from you're actually removing both the artists and the album. So yeah, uh, so far in the first 80, I've removed 16. I've replaced four. I've yet to really move stuff around. That'll be on the last video. But anyways, 20 through 11, talk through it, put the list up when I'm done. So anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, number 20 uh, is the Beach Boys Pet Sounds. Yeah, I'm not going to take this off. This is pretty good. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to have it as high. I'll probably bump it down after 50. I'm not as huge a fan of this, though I recognize, I recognize its importance and I recognize how good it is. Personally... I think uh, an album that maybe should go on here if it counted, but I'm not sure if it counts by whatever rubric they're doing, is the uh, reimagined or repurposed or the Smile album. There was a box set, the Smile Sessions, that I think had sort of uh, the out, it was reconstructed. They took the Smile album, which became Smiley Smile, but wasn't released as it was intended, um, and they reconstructed it. And I think that smile album which was re-released about wow 13 years ago now 2011 uh that smile reconstruction is amazing i think that's a better album than pet sounds but i'm not going to take pet sounds off it, it's a pretty pretty remarkable album uh number 19 is dr dre's the chronic which oh no there's another uh uh rap hip-hop album on here uh but definitely one of the highest ones i um, definitely not taking this off I personally would probably put um, uh, a tribe higher than this. I would put Nas higher than this. Not that they're more important albums. Um, not that they're, I mean, this G-Funk. I mean, just the invention of G-Funk, the, the grooves, the beats. Uh, I mean, Dr. Dre, it's a straight up home run. Uh, it's not coming off. It's definitely not dropping below the top 50. Um, definitely probably even going to stay in the top 20, maybe top 25. But uh there's a couple more I like a little bit better, but yeah, I'm not moving that. I'm not touching this right now. Understandable. Um, and another another instance of which, kind of like with Chuck D and Flavor Flav, like you have the best uh, sports reference, color commentator. You know, like you have your main announcer and then you got the color. Snoop Dogg is absolutely amazing. Mike Breen, Jeff Van Gundy, again. You got just the... You cannot ask for a better foil for Dre than uh, Snoop Dogg. Just absolutely perfect. Um, so yeah, that, that also has to be included in the mix of why this ranks so highly. Uh, number 18, Taylor Swift's 1989 Taylor's version. I'm taking this off. Um, I would have left Taylor Swift off the list if this was Red. And not her version of Red, the original version of Red. I think Red is a fantastic album. I think Red is arguably a top 100 album. Yes, when Red came out, I was teaching kindergarten to a group of girls. I had, uh, uh, through a weird set of circumstances, I usually only have 12 kids in my class, really small classes where I teach. I had 15 that year because a teacher quit, uh, like the first day of school, so I had to take four of the older kids, first grade teacher. Um, so I had 11 girls, and all of them, each of them loved this album. Uh, we played this all the friggin' time that year. Um, but, uh, and so I, I love the songs in real time and it still stuck around. I would even take something like Folklore, I think is a really good album I would put above 1989. I just don't think, I think if it's 1989, it's gotta be the original, not Taylor's version. And then, yeah, like I, I respect the fact that Taylor's putting her versions out there, but no, she's coming off the list. Though I, I would have kept her on if it was red. And if I had more replacements, I'd replace, I'd put red here. Drop it to like the 70s or 80s. Wouldn't keep it this high, but it's coming off. 17, Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Yeah, just an absolute classic. There's really nothing like it. It's just, it's such a great listen, such a great message, such great whatever R&B, soul, 
Marvin Gaye doing Marvin Gaye. It's just like kind of like a jazz soul, R&B. Like, I don't know, it's just absolutely perfect album. Uh, yeah, just definitely not taking this off. Um, even gonna keep it right here. Uh, number 16 is Joni Mitchell's Blue. I might move this higher. This might be an all time in the history of the world top 10 album. Just its simplicity. Uh, a singer and her instrument. I mean, it's as singer songwriter as you get. The lyrics are perfect. The performance is perfect. The variety, even though it's really just like acoustic guitar, piano, acoustic guitar, piano. Um, it just seems like it. Every every track just feels fresh. Some of the greatest singer songwriter songs of all time are on here. Yeah, it's depressing. It's not going to make you feel too good about too many things, but uh, yeah. Uh, easily staying on here and I might move this up. And then the other one I'm taking off, which I had to go back and re-listen to a couple times, I'm taking off Adele's 21. This is a great album. This is Adele's best album, I would argue. Rolling in the Deep, one of the greatest opening tracks of all time. But that might be part of the issue, is Rolling in the Deep is, is such a monster of a song. And there's a couple other tracks on here which kind of go for that same sort of very drum heavy kind of driving sound, um, which is a good sound, but there's a couple other tracks on this album, which maybe are kind of going for the same vibe and they just can't compare to the opening track and you just can't help but compare them to that opening track. Um, I don't know if musically there's anything absolutely spectacular going on here, other than the fact that Adele is one of the best singers of like the new millennium, uh, the materials, pretty strong even though it's all pretty depressing and heartbroken it's all about heartbreak and stuff like that but top 100 like i just i think the other singer songwriter stuff on air and i don't even know if she writes her own songs to be honest um i don't think she does i don't know um but i just don't think it compares like some of the stuff that's back farther on some of the more like r b singer songwriter stuff or soulful singer stuff just seems to have some weird narrative through line that this one just lacks. This is just a collection of really great songs by someone who can sing incredibly, incredibly well. But as a top 100 album, I'm just not getting that. I'm not getting that. So because I can, I'm taking this one off. 14, Bob Dylan, Highway 61 Revisited. I can't take this off. Um, I'm also not going to use my last replacement. I'm going to save that for the top 10, even though I don't know if I need it. Um, Bob Dylan might be one of those artists that uh, is on this list twice um, because he has another album that's not this, that sounds nothing like this, uh, that is in a completely different field of folk music, whatever whatever this is, this, this crazy new 60s wacky sound that he has, you know, 10, 9, 10 years from now, eight years down, in the next decade, he would do something so completely different that I argue is better than this but I can't take this off. I mean, Dylan really might be someone who probably deserves three in the top 100. Um, I'm only gonna add one more um, when all is said and done though. So, but this one, yeah, this one will stay here. Uh, 13, Jay-Z, The Blueprint. Um, yeah, um, yeah, uh, I'm not taking it off. Uh, another one of those, that, this is one of those where I'm like, is I wish more, Hip hop albums, rap albums with just the artists. I'm not a big fan of a lot of guests. There's not that many guests on here. It's a pretty streamlined album. Um, it's all Jay Z. Jay Z might be the goat. Um, yeah, this is staying on here. Absolutely fantastic. I might, as a personal favorite, bump up a, a tribe or maybe bump up a Nas, but I think it's this should be. I might even bump up Dr. Dre for personal like. Uh, personal preferences. But yeah, this is, I'd say, a top 25 album. Um, number 12, Radiohead's OK Computer. I'm going to keep it for now. But Kid A was already on here, and I kind of think Kid A needs to be ranked higher than this album. I think Kid A is, is just more of an adventure and more important and maybe just a little more of a, an experience. This is a great album. Not in any way, bashing OK Computer, but 
I don't know, man. I, I, I'm going to drop it below. It's going to drop down. I might even take it off when all is said and done. Not because it's not a good album, but I'm not sure that... I'm not sure Radiohead is one of the handful of artists that should have two albums in the top 100. And if I had to pick between the two, I would go with Kid A. But not going to take it off now. Going to leave it here. Um, but yeah. All right, number 12. Uh, but yeah. But with hesitancy, I keep it on. Only because, like I just said, not sure it should have two. And then number 11, Fleetwood Mac's Rumors. 100% staying on here. Not sure if it will end up here. Uh, but yeah. Um, I think the brilliance of this album has been recently like illustrated during the, the Drake-Kendrick beef that's been going on. Uh, only because there's a lot of really good memes in which people are like, yeah, you guys are writing tracks in different countries. I'm assuming Drake's up in Canada. Who knows? Maybe he's in LA. Um, in different places and then going at it. When these guys were like, hey, I'm going to write this diss song and you're going to sing it. And it's about you hurting me, but you got lines in this. And then we're going to stand on the same stage and we're going to sing it to each other. And yeah, my songs are about... Like I might be the lead singer and you're the guitar player and I got songs about you because the, the drummer got involved and meanwhile the guitar, the, the keyboardist and the bass player have songs going back at each other, though maybe you didn't write songs, uh, John. Uh, yeah, the drama on this album, it's fantastic. And they turned it into like, however many songs are on this, that number of perfect, perfect songs. Perfectly sequenced, everybody's got a moment to shine. Uh, yeah, 100% staying on. But yeah, uh, that's what I got. Uh, that's what they look like in written form. Um, and those are the ones I have taken off so far um, are those. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to put up the list of everything I've kept on so far because that's a really long list. Uh, but, yeah, there it is right there. All right. All right, well, thanks for watching. Um, that's all I got. Uh, let me know your thoughts on these albums. Would love, I'd like to hear a really, a really hearty defense of like um, Adele's album, Taylor Swift in general. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no Taylor Swift fashion. Like, you know, just to, well, what, I don't care. I'm rambling. All right, well, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share, do all those things and go listen to one of these albums, the ones that should be in this top 100. Thanks for watching. Peace. Talk to you later.